Hey game fans, this is Bertle here doing another unboxing and this time it is of one of uh, Kickstarter exclusive Awaken Realms uh, Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon and it's stretch goal box and what appears to be like a little bonus. I got this earlier in the year I want to say and um, haven't had time to unbox it. I usually do a lot of board gaming near the holidays so I wanted to get this opened and prepped and uh, ready to go for when that rolled around. Um, read the rules and maybe paint the miniatures, but um, we'll see how that goes. You know, never have enough time to do anything that I want, so um, what are you gonna do? Regardless, this looks like a whole lot of game. Uh, you got this bonus box, I guess we'll open that last. Um, the stretch goals box seems to be the same size as the, as the core box, so that's pretty cool. We'll see what's in there. Um, it says the Age of Legends and Last Night campaigns are in there, so that's pretty cool. And this, it's got a pretty, uh, pretty nice piece of art here. It looks like the, the land's being raised. You've got what's, I'm assuming to be um, maybe the Excalibur or something in the ground, because this is supposed to be like a, a King Arthur, um, like a legend, basically, like set in the, uh, the world of Camelot, Arthur, and whatnot, so that's pretty cool. Um, this is heavy tome. The side, it says Tainted Grail. And then on the back, it appears we got the box content, and it looks like it's loaded. Um, uh, this, I believe, is like a story adventure. Kind of everybody's doing their own thing, walking around the board that generates, and you're um, kind of like a... Um, story adventure along the line with Ark, um, Arkham Horror, I'm guessing, but I have to read the rules first. Anyways, it says, uh, yeah, here we go. Tainted Grail is a story-rich survival and exploration game for one to four players, set in a dark universe that blends Arthurian legends and uh, Celtic mythology with a unique dark vision. Um, each player controls one of four unlikely heroes who must face impossible odds where stronger and wiser champions have failed. Chased by the, encro uh, the encroaching twisted power of the weirdness, fighting an uphill battle against the pleading resources and challenging encounters, the characters set out to achieve the impossible and die many times in the process. A system of story triggers lets player players see the long-term consequences of their actions, while a deep branching storyline allows them to tackle problems in different ways, ensuring, ensuring no two games play alike. So... Yep, it says it's 15 chapters, two to three hours each, one to four players, 14 plus to play, and open play, and there's a quick save option, which I'm guessing uh, that's something maybe to, you can stop anytime you want, is what I'm guessing, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, well, looks like I'm going to have to need a knife because this is some high quality plastic art stopping me from opening it. So, here we go. Let's see what I bought from Kickstarter uh, a year ago or so. Who knows? I think it was a year ago. Um, this game's not particularly new, so sorry if uh, if you go looking for it and it's not available uh, anymore. But um, that was the breaks with Kickstarter. Kind of always just got to be addicted and following stuff to to stay ahead of it. But we'll see. We'll see if it's uh, if it's cool or not. It's definitely uh, looks like it's something up my um, up my alley. I I like the idea of any games that have solo play or or you know co-op or anything like that, just because they'll see a lot of table play for me. Um, so in here it says start here. Looks like it's some uh, quick start rules. So that's pretty cool. Just two pages of quick start. Um, the rule book looks like I was gonna say full. Oh yeah, it is full color. Um, I do like that it's got like some fantasy art uh, on the inside. Looks like full color cards. Um, the rule book looks like it is 22 pages with an index, which I like. Rule summary on the back, so that's always useful during gameplay, especially. If it's rules heavy, having a quick aid is always 
nice and it's playing the game so that's uh pretty good um wow this is the exploration journal which i'm pretty sure is um <coughs> the story <coughs> excuse me all the stories and whatnot <coughs> oh, excuse me Mm -mm -mm. Sorry about that. <coughs> oh. So anyways, looks like we got a spiral bound adventure book here, which uh, is pretty intense for an adventure, I guess. Let's see if I can get in here without too much trouble. Anyways, this uh, this looks pretty intense. Look at it, it's straight up <laughs> college uh, college bound here. But um, what do we got going on here? Um, so it looks like entries for each beat of the story, and it's broken up into the top. It's this is 106. Start does it start at one? Let's take a look. Starts at 101, and I'm guessing depending on the story that you draw, there is basically the choose your own adventures of selections and choices of what happens. But yeah, that's that's pretty intense. That's pretty heavy duty deal right there. Here's your save sheet. Um, oh, I'm missing a letter here. Uh I am. I know you're not easy to pinpoint, so I pray the All Mother. Uh, I don't know what this is. Master Pathfinder, but looks like a, a letter to Niam was hidden in here. Hopefully, it wasn't from somebody uh, that was assembling this game and asking for help because I probably won't read. <laughs> it's already been a year since I've got it. It's, that uh, ship has sailed for the most part. Um, oh, what do we got here? This looks like a map. That's pretty cool. Let's, let's get in here. Even if I'm reading uh, spoilers, which I'm not, I'm not big on spoilers, but uh, even if I am reading them, my memory isn't that isn't what it was once was. So uh, I won't be retaining any of this. But yeah, it looks like we got some notes. It's pretty cool, and it looks like maybe there's a map for each player. So that's. That's pretty neat. It looks like they're all the same, so um, can't knock that. And oh, well, here it was uh, Naim, Naim. So she looks pretty, uh, pretty intense. She's missing an eye already. Um, and look at this. So there you go. It's all fitting inside of this box so far. And, oh, on top, yeah, see, I really like this, um, the container for what looks like the player sheets. Um, they kind of had the same thing inside of the, uh, the Nemesis box set, which was also really awesome, awesome game um, they made, where in the plastic, they kind of thought it out so you could fit your uh the inserts like right in here when you repackage it so that's that's pretty sweet um i'm a fan of uh of companies who come up with storage solutions that i don't have to fill, uh, figure out myself um so that's uh that's pretty nice because my ocd will take over and i'll be um trying to figure out how to store my game before before i even played it uh let's see what we got going on here but some of the player characters. Uh, I'm gonna butcher all these names. Eli looks like she looks awesome. Looks like a, I don't know, maybe a druid or something. But and then Bior, Bior. Look, he's got a hammer. So that's cool. Like him already. 
uh, maggot. Wow, this guy looks like maybe he's a mage or something. I, I guess by the big cape and the bald head, I don't know, that just screams mage to me. And Aive, maybe? I don't know. But this guy looks like a warrior. That's cool. But he's got a sight, so who knows? Maybe he's just a farmer that's had enough. Um, then, look at all these cards. Man, got just a stack of what looks like, uh, well, it's on one side's order, uh, looks like a player order. So that's pretty cool. Ooh, a bunch of cubes, some reds, and some purples. And just cards for days. I kind of don't want to uh, do too much because I don't know what this says combat, good weather. Uh, what else do we got? Advancement pool. Yeah, better open these as I as I learn how to play because there's looks like a ton of cards and it's probably a ton of organization diplomacy that I don't want to mix up um, because I don't know what these all do. Revealed locations. I'm not sure if this is a legacy game where things are unlocked as they go. You got encounter cards. Just on the back here it says Glade Hair. So that's pretty cool. Um, more encounters. So we, let's pop these open because these are stuff like they're monster cards of some sort. Mm -mm -mm. Take a peek. At what these are what kind of uh what kind of fights you'll be getting into or trouble as to be had all right so we got temptations whoever they are curfew let's see the plague <laughs> so it just looks like some some pox has come to town and that's uh that's too bad um we got a slick fraudster, so somebody who's just uh, selling you some snake oil, probably. A drunken knight. So <laughs> these are uh, a weeping orphan. Man, these are uh, just makes you feel bad about being in this world. To be honest, nothing. Uh, when we're just talking about drunk knights and, and orphans and the plague, it's rough. Last resort, a press gang. She so getting getting uh, taken into the local militia more than likely, or. Pirates, I don't know. Um, false accusations. Wow. I mean, there's a whole lot of not good options happening. Calm before the storm. It's a nice piece of full full art for the card. That's pretty cool. What's it say? It says, nothing happens. Place the card at the bottom of the blue encounter deck. All right. I think that's probably one of the ones you're happy to see. Um, as opposed to the crazed farm. Hey, I was right. There are just crazed crazy uh, farmers having having a go at it with their sights and a vagabond ooh what do we a weird claim that's cool yeah, I'll just go through this one and highwaymen man clansmen wandering priestess I do like this our full page uh, card art that's pretty cool seasoned warrior um, Lone Squire, Bow Maiden. That's pretty cool. Bow Maiden. The art in this game is just great so far. From what I've seen and remember from the Kickstarter. A questing party. Man, there's a ragtag group right here. You got like what looks like a dwarf, a chick with a hammer, and some malnourished dude with a staff. So it's a pretty hardcore. Beast Slayer, Hero of Men. Ooh, here we go. Some supernatural looking stuff. Knight Errant. I think it says Errant. Errant. It's pretty cool. Alright. So that that's that. That's pretty cool. Put that back in there. And it's the last one to say. You are going insane. Okay. So there's some madness cards of some sort. Uh, let's open up these big ones, see what these are all about. These might just be the locations or something. So take a take a look, see at that. And uh, 
<clears throat> All right, order of the day. Yeah, that's just actions. Uh, icon, uh, icon glossary, it says. And what else do we got? Combat overview. Uh, what is that? Thought, thought on, and it's got a number there. And it's telling you what um, what's on the, I'm guessing the location in the story. Um, here we go. We got Besieged Camelot, number 195. Um, let me see. Let's take a look at some of this. So You can see there's, uh, if you have part 7 of the Left Behind status, verse 10, otherwise read on. And then on the back, it looks like a piece of art. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so I'm guessing these are all in some sort of order. So I better not go too crazy with it. But um, Crow's Nest, Halfway Meeting. It's really impressive, though. They all have, like, their own piece of art. Fortress, uh, no, not the Fortress. Forest of Whispers. And, like, I guess where it's at on the map. The Tombs of the Order. So that's pretty cool. It's all um, very neat. Um, looks like we got some custom dice. Looks like uh, north, south, east, and west on this. And a six-sided that's just numbered one through six. Pretty cool. And... Then some miniatures. Um, looks like what do we got in here? Man, they got a tight fit here. Um, pretty well sculpted. Uh, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, can't really get it. Pretty, uh, pretty nice looking uh, blacksmith piece. And there's a girl with like a staff, so maybe she's like a witch or a druid or something. Here goes my guy with the scythe. It's looking pretty good. And she's got, looks like two blades of some sort. I think it's the Niam, the girl with the, the bandage over her eye. Maggot. That's pretty cool. I like wizards. Maybe I'll play him. And maybe a couple of bad guys. We got this giant with uh, four arms and some weapons. That's pretty cool. And then... Look at this, that's massive. Looks like a skeleton. And compared to the player character, that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big mini. Mm, another one, it's pretty nice. And they all have uh, different sculpts, so that's really cool. Uh, what else? Looks like we got some coins. That's always fun for a board game, having some plastic coins. Um, when they really go out, you got metal coins and whatnot. Um, some tokens, colored tokens, and whatever those are. But, yep, and some pouches and stuff for you to put put your stuff away in. So, that's uh, not bad at all. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's see if Get this back in real quick. Anyways, um, let's take a look at the stretch goals real quick. Guessing if it's 
just cards and uh, and a couple other things, but we'll see. I, I really don't remember what all the uh, all the stretch goals were. Um, I'm guessing more figures. I'm usually a sucker for figures when it comes to uh, comes to Kickstarters and whatnot. That's what I'm usually looking for: miniatures, games. So I can, if the game isn't that good, I can uh, use the miniatures in some of my other wargaming uh, fun that I like to have. But so far, so good. Looks great. Um, let's. Looks like there's a little cut on this already. Let's see if I can take advantage of that. Apparently so. Okay. Move that out the way. <clears throat> like I said, this said was the age and legends of the last night. And <clears throat> contents looks like there's some miniatures on the back. And it says, Tainted Grail, uh, Tainted Grail stretch goals include two additional full-size campaigns, each offering a vast world to explore and countless hours of mysteries and secrets to uncover. In the last night, players fray into the frozen apocalyptic Avalon 400 years after the core box campaign events. This sets the aftermath of all your decisions made during the fall of Avalon and bring the history of human conquest to a conclusion while tackling unique and new encounters, a uh, new exposure mechanic, and dangerous locations with the help of their unlikely ally. The Age of Legends takes place 600 years before the Core Box campaign, and it throws the characters into a thrilling story alongside legends such as King Arthur, Lancelot, Merlin, and Nimu, a Nimu allowing players to discover the origins of many myths and, pla and places that came to know in other campaigns while traveling Beautiful while wild Avalon characters will get to command entire armies and build structures thanks, thanks to new military power mechanics. Together with the uh, basic Fall of Avalon campaign, campaign, these two new stories create an intricately connected trilogy that spans a full millennium and is told across hundreds of exciting locations and journal passages, offering a board game experience unlike any other. Oof, <clears throat> that sounds like it. Sounds like a lot. So, let's see what we got here. Um, so we got more save sheets. They are really, uh, banking on you, uh, playing a lot. So, <laughs> it's pretty cool, though. I can't, I cannot knock, um, having a lot of player notes. My, uh, when I play with my family, sometimes they, won't, they get neurotic and don't want to use them and want to make copies or something. So, it's nice to have some, uh, a full stock, because I know we won't play... As much as we play games, we will never get th that amount of games in. So, looks like more more letters from uh, Niam and Mab and all the all the characters. So that's that's really cool uh, having like a uh, RPG element to it. Looks like um, looks like we got the the character sheets here. So they all look pretty cool. The art in this game is is pretty outstanding um more than likely one of the reasons why i i kicked it to, be, to begin with say everything just looks really really cool um so yeah real dark dark fantasy um and i dig it so let's see oh man the explorer's journal so there's one of the campaigns i'm guessing and Exploration Journal number two. So that was Age of Legends, and this is the last night. So that's uh, really neat. And just a ton more cards and what looks like more miniatures. So that's awesome. Um, guessing these are the locations again. Not 100% sure, so don't get mad at me if I don't know because I haven't read the book. I'm just unboxing it right now. Um, special events. And more special events. Looks like looks like there's some combat in there. Not too bad. Encounter. Indirect fire. That's cool. Uh, crazed. Crazed settler. So and there's just a lot of angry townsfolk. It appears. Um, yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? Dark ages and whatnot, right? Everybody's mad. 
It's like, what is this spongy thing that I keep feeling? But it's it's just some foam. I'm like, what is that? Uh, got a pack donkey. Oh man, you know it's you know it's a good time. You can you get know, uh, you need a pack donkey for the amount of loot that you're getting. Some special events, just a ton of special events and encounters. It's like, man, I guess I'm really gonna have to go through these and see how they're uh, supposed to be separated because they all look the same. Um, we got little cards that look like, that actually looks like a dungeon or something, so that's kind of cool. I have no idea what's going on, uh, how this game plays, but it looks cool. And a sweet looking set of uh, miniatures. Oh, there's the pack donkey. And everybody in here is looking pretty uh, pretty nice, so give it a pop open. Oh, wow. She's got a wolf. Let's see. Let's see if I can. Oh. She's got a wolf. That's pretty cool. Look at this guy. He's got like a got like a meat cleaver hatchet deal going. Some woodland animals on your staffs. That's how you know you're druiding right because you got all kinds of animals just flocking to you. Ooh, I like this character. Look at that. Just pack rat on the back. It's got a map to go find some more stuff. That's pretty cool. Even even the the base has got some some action going on it. Some looks like they based them so that's pretty cool um some you know some real viking looking stuff going on here so not too bad these I'm like if this game is terrible these miniatures are are beautiful so definitely be able to use them in D D or miniature war gaming or something but the game's probably good you know i don't know we'll see looks like a bard or something looks like she's got a harp or a really bad washboard, who knows. And last but not least, the pack mule. Look at that sucker, he's putting in work. Um, yeah, that looks great. I will uh, I will gladly uh, uh, table this game whenever I can uh, find, find some time with the family to give it a go. Um, oh yeah, there's one more. One more little box, so let's give that a look as well. Let's see. Hopefully the game makes sense after I try and play it with, since I've just mixed all the cards up and probably not going to make any sense, but what are you going to do? Uh -uh -uh. There's that. Nope. Let's see. Okay, almost. Uh, whatever. Oh, she goes there. Goes there. All right, get in there. And all right. Last but not least, this side and take a look at what is in this box. Probably. Probably nothing. Oh, uh, art book to another game they had on Kickstarter, apparently. So, oh yeah, learn more about ISS uh, Vanguard. So, that's cool. Um, I will say the art in this game is good. So, if it's got uh, art that's the same, uh, it's probably not terrible to have an art book. Um, take a quick, a quick peek. Looks like a, some red planet action, some more planet action, and some more. It just looks like some landscapes, so yeah, there's that. Um, Almanac of Avalon, so there we go. Oh, pack donkey, should, should keep that with that. Oh okay, looks like a looks like a world bible of uh, some sort. Let's see. 
sorry if I'm out of focus. I get caught up in uh, looking at my stuff and forget that I'm recording half the time. Apparently I just talk to myself when I'm doing everything. Um, so check that out. Anyways, oh weapons. That's cool. I love concept art stuff like this. This is just flavor of the world. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really neat. I, I appreciate that. The art book for the other game, you know, doesn't really get me excited. It could have been a full art book for uh, for this game, and I would have uh, probably been a little more excited. And a uh, letter, perhaps, from King Arthur. We'll see. Who knows? Um, a little envelope with a, a, a seal. <laughs> um, what does this say? Dear backer. Oh, they're talking to me. Oof. That is a... Uh, Lengthy letter. Incredibly excited to present you to Tana Grill Fall in Avalon. Okay, so it's a thank you letter. Well, that's cool. Um, and it's telling me what's in here. The Almanac of Avalon and the art book. So, uh, just saying, uh, hey, make a review on Board Game Geek and say thanks. Well, I made a video, so um, there you go. I did my part. Uh, the, the game looks cool. Hopefully it's fun. Anyways. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, my name is Roberto. I love uh, I love board games and toys. So you know, big old kid. Anyway, uh, let me know if you picked this up and what you've, uh, how you, what was your experience? Because I haven't actually had time to play it yet, and who knows when I'll get it on the table. I I like the to think I'll get it on the table, but who knows when I will. So let me know if it's fun. If not, uh, see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.